Hi everyone, it's Professor Primton. In this video, we're going to talk about applications of definite integrals. So in the last couple of videos, we talked about how to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to find out the value of a definite integral, which represents the area under the curve on a closed interval, bounded by the x-axis. Now we're going to talk about applications involving definite integrals in terms of useful life of a commodity, and also talking about average value of a function using integration. So let's pick up where we left off from the previous video. Another important application from business and marketing is also the concept of useful life of a commodity or a product. Whenever the marginal cost and the marginal revenue functions are equal to one another, then you have the useful life of the product or the commodity. In other words, the cost and the revenue functions are changing at the same rate if the marginal cost and the marginal revenue functions are equal to one another. That means that the company is typically no longer going to produce or sell the product and introduce a newer model of the product or the commodity on the market. So let's look at example six, useful life. An amusement company maintains records for each arcade game installed at a store. Suppose that C of T and R of T represent the total accumulated cost and the total accumulated revenues in thousands of dollars, respectively, where T is the number of years since the particular game was introduced to the store. Suppose that the marginal cost function and the marginal revenue functions are given as this. C prime of T is equal to two, that's the marginal cost function, and r prime of t is equal to 9 times e to negative 0.5 t power, and that's the marginal revenue function. Number one, find the useful life of the arcade game installed at the store to the nearest year. So this is not going to involve calculus. We want to be able to find out what is the useful life of the game. Well, that occurs when the marginal cost, which is c prime of t, is equal to the marginal revenue, which is r prime of t. So we have an equation that's solved. We have c prime of t was equal to 2, that's the left side of the equation, is equal to r prime of t, which is 9 times e to the negative 0.5 times t. So on the right side of the equation, you have an exponential function. So this becomes an exponential equation that you want to solve for t, which occurs in the exponent. So remember how to solve exponential equations. You want to get the exponential part by itself first. So that means you want to get e to negative 0.5 t isolated on one side of the equation. So divide both sides of the equation by 9 first. So you have e to negative 0.5 t is equal to 2 divided by 9. And now you can use the natural logarithm to help you cancel out the base e on the exponential expression. So you take natural log on the left side of the equation. So natural log of e to the negative 0.5t is equal to natural log on the right side of the equation. So natural log of 2 ninths. So natural log and e are inverses of one another. So you have natural log and e will cancel each other out. And so you have negative 0.5 times t on the left side of the equation is equal to natural log of 2 ninths on the right side of the equation. And so now we want to find out what is the value of t or the useful life of the product. So divide both sides of the equation by negative 0.5. So t is natural log of 2 ninths, and if you put this into a calculator, you'll get approximately 3.008 years. And so if we went around to the nearest year, that means the arcade game has a useful life of about 3 years. Now part number 2. Find the total profit accumulated during the useful life of the arcade game. So we want to find out if the arcade game only has a useful life of 3 years before the company will introduce a new product or a new arcade game to the store, we want to find out what is the total profit that the company accumulates during those three years. So if we want to find out the total profit, we need to find out what is the antiderivative for the marginal profit function. So let's calculate the marginal profit function. Marginal profit was capital P prime of T. It's the marginal revenue function, R prime of T. Subtract the marginal cost function, C prime of T. So we have R prime of T that was given in the problem. R prime of T was 9 times E to negative 0.5 T. And then you want to subtract C prime of T. That was also given in the problem as just equal to 2. So you have 9e to negative 0.5t subtract 2. That's the marginal profit function. We know that if we find out the family of integrals for this function, the marginal profit function, then we'll have just the profit function. So the total profit accumulated during the useful life of the game would be capital P of t, that's the profit function, would be the indefinite integral of capital P prime of t, that's the marginal profit function, with respect to t. So let's replace capital P prime of t with the function that we just found. It's 9 times e to negative 0.5 t power, then subtract 2. We will want to find the family of integers for this function with respect to t. So we have two different terms. Let's separate this out into two different integrals. So we have the indefinite integral of 9 e to negative 0.5 t dt for the first integral, then subtract, keep the sign between the integrals, integral of 2 dt. Notice in this first integral, it's not just e to the t power, it's e to a function. The function is negative 0.5t, so we're going to have to use the substitution rule for that integral. So let's let u be the exponent. That's going to be the inside function. So u equals negative 0.5t. Let's take the derivative of u with respect to t. So du dt, the derivative of negative 0.5t is negative 0.5. And now multiply both sides of the equation by dt to get du by itself. So du is equal to negative 0.5 times dt. 
So now divide both sides of the equation by negative 0.5 so we can get dt by itself, so we can replace the dt to be in terms of du. And so dt is on one side of the equation, du divided by negative 0.5, and if you simplify this, you'll get negative 2 du, because dividing by a half is really multiplying by 2. So you have negative 2 du. So let's go back and figure out what is the integer for each of these integrals. So the first integral was indefinite integral from 9e to negative 0.5t dt. Subtract the second integral, integral of 2 dt. Well, the first integral, 9 is a coefficient, so you can pull it outside the integral sign using the property of integration. And then you have e, negative 0.5t dt. Subtract the integral 2 dt. Again, you want to change the e to the negative 0.5t to e to the u using the substitution rule. So you have 9 on the outside, integral of e to the u. The dt becomes negative 2 du, as we said before. And then the second integral is integral of 2 dt. We don't have to use the substitution rule. What's the integer of 2 where the variable integration is t? It's 2t. So you have subtract 2t and then plus c for the constant of integration because these are indefinite integrals. So the first integral, we still need to find out the family of integers for. We have 9 times integral e to the u times negative 2 du. That's really 9 times negative 2. That's negative 18 on the outside of the integral. And the integral is e to the u du. And everything else stays the same. Negative 2t plus c. Now let's find out the family of integers of e to the u, where the variable integration is u. So capital P of t would be negative 18 times the integer of e to the u is e to the u. Subtract 2t plus c. Now, so now notice that this function should be in terms of t, but we have u still, and we also have a t. So let's replace the u with what we called it earlier. We called u was negative 0.5t. So go back and replace that. So you have negative 18e to negative 0.5t. Subtract 2t plus capital C. So this is the profit function. We want to find out what is the total accumulated profit for this arcade game over its useful life. So the total profit accumulated during the useful life of the game would be the definite integral from 0 to 3, so that we'd be adding up the area from 0 to 3 years, of the marginal profit function, capital P prime of t dt. We know that capital P prime of t was 9 times e to negative 0.5t, then subtract 2, so we'll make that replacement in for the integrands, and then the variable integration is t. We know the family of integers for this function now. We found out it was negative 18 e to negative 0.5t, subtract 2t, and we can drop the c because we can just take c equals 0 for an integer when we use the fundamental theorem calculus. So you have negative 18 e to negative 0.5t, subtract 2t, and now since we have an integer, let's evaluate using the fundamental theorem calculus, where t equals 3 is the upper limit of integration, and t equals 0 is the lower limit of integration. So here's the antiderivative. Let's plug in 3 for the upper limit of integration first for the values of t. You have negative 18, e to negative 0.5 times 3 in the exponent, then subtract 2 times 3. This will give you the answer for when the antiderivative is evaluated at t equals 3, the upper limit of integration. Now let's plug in t equals 0 for the lower limit of integration into the antiderivative. So you have negative 18, e to negative 0.5 times 0 for the exponent, subtract 2 times 0. And we know that we want to subtract these two different antiderivatives evaluated at the upper limit of integration and then subtract the antiderivative evaluated at the lower limit of integration. So now let's just simplify. We have negative 18 e to negative 1.5 exponent, then subtract 2 times 3 is 6, subtract between the two different antiderivatives evaluated. Then you have negative 18 e to the negative 0 0.5 times 0, negative 0 0.5 times 0 is just 0, and e to the 0 is just 1. So you have negative 18 times 1 and then subtract 2 times 0, just give you 0. So the first set of parentheses gives you negative 18 e to negative 1.5, subtract 6, and then you have a subtract 18 from the second set of parentheses, so it's really plus 18. So if you simplify this and round the two decimal places, you'll have about 7.98. Now this is talking about total profit accumulated during the useful life of the arcade game, and the profit was in thousands of dollars. So this is 7.98 thousand dollars. This is the amount that the company will accumulate in profit for three years of the arcade game. Another, ap another application of definite integrals is what's called the average value of a function. We know how to find the average of a set of numbers. If you have a number a1, a2, through an, and you want to find out what is that average of all those numbers, then you add them all up, you find the sum, and you divide by how many numbers you have. If the subscript is n, then you have n numbers here. So you would add them all up and divide by n. However, what if you want to find out the average temperature of the entire day? There are far too many possible temperatures that you need to add up during the entire day, and time is continuous, so you would have an infinite number of values to add up and then divide. Well, we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate a definite integral that represents the average value of a function over a closed interval using the following formula. The average value of a continuous function. If f of x is continuous on a closed interval, x equals a to x equals b, 
then the average value of the function f of x over that interval is given as this formula. 1 divided by the quantity b minus a in the denominator times the definite integral from x equals a to x equals b, f of x dx. So the integral from a to b, f of x dx, that represents the area under the curve on the closed interval x equals a to x equals b, bounded by the x-axis that's under the curve y equals f of x. And then the 1 divided by b minus a, the b minus a is the length of the closed interval, so you take the right endpoint, subtract the left endpoint, and that makes up the denominator. The average value of a positive function, so if the function is completely above the x-axis, you have a nice geometric interpretation. Imagine that the area under the function f of x is a liquid that can leak through the graph to form a rectangle with the same area. So this figure on the left represents the value of the definite integral from x equals a to x equals b of the function f of x and then with respect to x. Imagine that this area is allowed to leak until it forms a rectangle. Then you would have this figure. This area is transformed into an area of a rectangle. And we know the formula of a rectangle is length times width. The length of this rectangle is b minus a, the length of that interval, times the height. The height is represented as just capital H, just some number. If the height of the rectangle is capital H, then the area of the rectangle is h times b minus a, as we just said. We know that the area of the rectangle is the same as the area that was on the left, that was underneath the curve. So capital H times b minus a, that's the area of the rectangle, is equal to the area under the curve from x equals a to x equals b of the function y equals f of x. So if you want to divide both sides of the equation by b minus a, you get this value. Capital H is equal to 1 divided by b minus a in the denominator times the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx. This represents the average value of the function over that closed interval. In other words, the average value of a positive function f of x is the height of the rectangle for the figure that was on the right. So this value h is called the average value of the function on that closed interval from x equals a to x equals b. So let's try an example to figure out what does it actually mean to find the average value of a continuous function over a closed interval. So example 7, average value of a function. During the early 2000s, the annual rate of capital R of t equals 16.1 times e to the 0.07t in the exponent was billion barrels of oil per year, where t is the number of years since 1990. Determine the average annual worldwide rate of oil consumption between the years 2010 and 2020. The key word in this entire problem is that you want to find out the average annual worldwide rate of oil consumption. But the oil consumption is given as a function, not just a list of numbers. It's a function, a continuous function, on a closed interval from between 2010 and 2020. So since t is the number of years since 1990, let's figure out what 2010 and 2020 would be in terms of t. So if t is years since 1990, t would be 2010 subtract 1990 is 20. So 20 years after 1990 is 2010. And same thing for 2020. T for 2020 would be 30 because it's 30 years after 1990. The average value of a function, this is the formula that we had earlier. It's 1 divided by b minus a in the denominator times the definite integral from x equals a to x equals b of f of x dx. And so the average annual worldwide rate of oil consumption from 2010 to 2020 would be this value. It would be 1 divided by b is the right endpoint of your closed interval, so 2020. Subtract your left endpoint, x equals a, so that would be 2010. And then you have the definite integral from x equals a, that would be 2010, to x equals b, which would be 2020. The function that we're talking about is the worldwide oil consumption rate, which was the function given in the problem. And then the variable of integration is t, so dt. So if you simplify, you'll have one-tenth as a coefficient on the outside of the integral. There were 10 years between 2020 and 2010. And then the definite integral becomes, in terms of t values, 2010 was the value 20 for t, and 2020 was the value t equals 30. So this becomes t equals 20 to t equals 30 on the definite integral for the limits of integration. The r of t was 16.1 e to the 0.07 t, and then dt. If we want to find out the average annual worldwide oil consumption rate, we want to figure out the value of that definite integral. Notice you don't have e to the t, you have e to a function, so we have to use the substitution rule. So let u be the exponent on the exponential function. So let u be 0.07t. Now take the derivative of u with respect to t. So you have du dt is the derivative of 0.07t. That's 0.07. Now multiply both sides of the equation by dt to get du by itself. So du is equal to 0.07 times dt. And we know we want to replace the dt in the integral in terms of du. So solve this equation for dt by dividing both sides of the equation by 0.07. So dt is equal to du divided by 0.07.
Now, since we have a definite integral and we're using the substitution method, we also have to change the limits of integration. Let's use the substitution u equals 0.07t to find out what is that value of u for the lower limit of integration. So if t equals 20, that means u equals 0.07 times 20 for the t, which is 1.4. So that's the new lower limit of integration. t equals 30, that was the upper limit of integration in terms of t. Let's find out its value for u. So you have u equals 0.07 times t, which would be 0.07 times 30, or 2.1. And so now it's changed the entire integral to be in terms of u and du, with also the limits of integration to be in terms of u. So the average value for the worldwide rate of oil consumption between 2010 and 2020 would be 1 tenth integral from 20 to 30, 16.1e to 0.07t dt. This is what we had in terms of t. Now we're going to change it to be in terms of u. So you have 16.1, that's a coefficient that can be taken outside the integral sign. So you have 16.1 divided by 10 on the outside of the integral. Then you have the integral from 20 to 30, e to the 0.07t dt. Now I'll change everything to be in terms of u and also du, and also the limits of integration to be in terms of u. So 16.1 divided by 10 is 1.61. e to the 0.07t. The 0.07t is being replaced with a u, so you have e to the u. And then the dt was being replaced with du divided by 0.07. Now don't forget about the limits of integration. It was t equals 20. If t equals 20, then u is 1.4. That's the lower limit of integration. And if t equals 30, then the upper limit of integration was 2.1. And so now we have 1.61, and then the 0.07 is in the denominator. That's also a coefficient that can be taken outside the integral sign. So you have 1.61 divided by 0.07 on the outside of the integral. Then you have the integral from 1.4 to 2.1, e to the u, du. We know the antiderivative of e to the u. It's just e to the u. So you have 1.61 divided by 0.07. That comes out to be 23. And then e to the u, evaluated using the fundamental theorem calculus where u equals the upper limit was 2.1, and the u equals the lower limit, which was 1.4. So using the fundamental theorem calculus, you have 23e to the u, that's the upper limit of integration goes in first, so you have 23e to the 2.1 power, subtract 23e to the lower limit of integration, so 23e to the 1.4 power. And so if you approximate this, you'll come out to be 94.55, and that is billions of barrels of oil consumption. This represents the average value for the oil consumption over the entire closed interval from 2010 to 2020. Let's do one more example. Example 8, the average amount of water. The graph shown below represents the amount of water in a reservoir over a 12-hour period. Estimate the average amount of water in the reservoir over this time period. So notice in this graph on the left, you have the horizontal axis is representing T in hours. So the reservoir between 0 and 12 hours is graphed. And then the y-axis, or the vertical axis, is in terms of millions of liters of water. So it looks like the reservoir started off with about 24 million liters of water, and then it decreased over the first six hours. Then it looks like the reservoir fills back up until you get to about 11 hours, and then it starts to decrease again, up till 12 hours. We want to find out what is the average amount of water that's actually in this reservoir over those 12 hours. We can't just simply add up how much is in the reservoir after one hour, then two hours, then three hours, then four hours, because this is a closed interval, zero to 12, and it's a continuous function. You have an infinite number of values that you want to add up. That's where you want to use the definite integral to find out the area under the curve. So if we let capital V of T be the volume of the water after T hours in the reservoir, then the average amount of water would be it'd be 1 12th, because the interval has a length of 12. It'd be 12 minus zero on this closed interval. Integral from 0 to 12, capital V of t, dt. So we want to find out an approximation for this definite integral from 0 to 12, capital V of t, dt, because we don't know what the function V of t is. We just have its graph. We're going to use six approximation rectangles on the closed interval 0 to 12, because that's a nice number that goes into 12, 6, to estimate the value of that definite integral. Notice that each rectangle will have a length of 2 hours. Notice the width of each approximation rectangle will be 2 because you have a length of 12 for the entire interval, 12 minus 0 in the numerator, and we're using 6 rectangles, so 12 divided by 6 will give you 2. So if we're using approximation rectangles, we can either use left endpoints, right endpoints, or even midpoints. For this example, we're going to use right endpoints. So if we use right endpoints as the height of the rectangles, then we have the following. The definite integral from 0 to 12 of the function capital V of t dt can be approximated using approximation rectangles. We'll have the first approximation rectangle determined by its right endpoint, which will be at t equals 2. It looks like the height of the rectangle will be about 18, so 18 times the width of the rectangle, which was 2, plus the area of the second rectangle. The height of the rectangle is determined when t equals 4 for the second rectangle, so t equals 4. It looks like it's about 9.7. 
So 9.7 times 2 for the area of the second rectangle. And now you do the same thing for the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth rectangles. The third rectangle, the right end point, looks like it's about 8.2. So 8.2 times 2 for that area. The fourth rectangle, the height is about 12. So you have 12 times 2 for its area. The fifth rectangle, the height is about 19.9. .9, so 19.9 .9 times 2 for its area. And the last rectangle, the height looks like it's about 22. So you have 22 times 2 for its area. If you add up all these areas for the rectangles, the accumulated area for the approximation rectangles will be about 179.6. So this gives you an approximation for the definite integral from 0 to 12, capital V of T, DT. It's about 179.6 millions of liters of water. And so that means the average amount of water during the 12-hour period is 1 12th. The definite integral was about 179.6 millions of liters of water. So 1 12th times 179.6 comes out to be about 15 million liters of water. So that's the average amount of water that's in the reservoir over those 12 hours, about 15 million liters of water. So we use approximation rectangles to find out the value of the definite integral. Another way to estimate may be to approximate where a horizontal line may be drawn on the graph as an average height of the approximation rectangles. So if you take the approximation rectangles heights and you want to average those, then you want to draw a horizontal line that represents the average height of all the rectangles where all the approximation rectangles have the same width. In the above figure, the area that's under the curve and the area under the rectangle formed by the equation y equals 15 are approximately the same. So if you find out the area that's underneath the curve, that was the definite integral from 0 to 12 of capital V of T dt, that area under the curve is equal to or approximately equal to the area that's underneath this rectangle from t equals 0 to t equals 12. And that's what the average value of a function actually means. If you take the area that's underneath this curve and you draw in a horizontal line that represents the approximate height of the function over that closed interval, then the area under the rectangle should also be the same or approximately the same. So you can estimate the placement of the horizontal line so that the area under the curve and under the line are the same. So this finishes our video on applications of definite integrals in terms of useful life and also average value of a function over a closed interval. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well.